This is Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Welcome to this episode of Forge Daily. I'm your host, Mackenzie Barwell, checking in July 26, 2024. It is match day minus one for Forge FC. This morning was their final practice before they match up against the Halifax Wanderers tomorrow at home. Today, I'll talk about where the Wanderers are at after their 3-1 victory over Valor FC, as well as check in with a couple Forge players after training, including Noah Garve and Chris Colongo. Okay, let's begin with the current form of the Halifax Wanderers, because a few players stood out following their victory against Valor, beginning with defender Dan Nimick. He converted two penalties into goals, securing the win for them, and just showcasing his reliability under pressure. Ryan Telfer, also instrumental in their attack, consistently creating opportunities and winning one of those penalties. Lastly, Aiden Daniels and Kale Lowry, key contributors here. Daniels, very active in the opposing final third and Lowry scoring the equalizer for the Wanderers. Now, since 2019, the Halifax Wanderers and Forge have matched up 21 times, eight of which have gone to Forge, three going to Halifax, and 10 ending in a draw. Forge haven't beaten Halifax since 2022. So here are the conversations I had with Garb and Noah, beginning with what makes it so challenging to get an edge over this Halifax side. I think that last year they they really progressed in their, their style of play with the new coach, new players. Uh, so especially tactically, I think it's one of the best team tactically in the league. Uh, like they they know, I don't want to say they know how to play against us, but uh, you can tell the the way they approach games against us is different than when they play against other teams. But I don't know. I just, I just think it comes to us. Uh, last game against them, I think we probably should have got a result. And you could, in like a matter of five, ten minutes, the game changed. So as long as we stay concentrated and focus on our game plan, I think it will go well. I think it's been a little different the past couple of years now that Patrice is their coach. Um, Patrice is a guy that I've played against since I was 14, 15 years old. And I know that Bobby has coached against them plenty of times. I know that once he took over, Halifax prided themselves a lot more on taking care of the ball and imposing a style that was somewhat similar to ours. Um, they've changed a little bit recently, but they're always going to be a tough team to play just because they know the most about us. Again, Patrice has coached against Bobby plenty of times, and I imagine from that he's taken notice of a lot of his tactics. And so I think that makes it a little difficult. And I would say the quality of the league just in general has gone up over the past couple of years and makes every game a little bit more competitive. Tomorrow we'll be at home, so how do you plan on leveraging that home field advantage, and do you feel you've capitalized on that this season? I think uh, this year we're way better than last year at home. Uh, We've gotten uh, a lot of points at at home, and uh, our fans like change make a big difference. You can tell even in the MLS games, when you play against uh, Toronto and uh, Montreal, like they bring the the energy, and uh, they're going to play a huge factor tomorrow. So hopefully uh, we can get a win uh, again in front of them. I think definitely better than last year. I know last year we struggled at sometimes to get results at home. So this year's been a lot better. Um, I know that taking points at home is something that you need to do if you want to finish high in the standings. And it's a lot better to play against Halifax here than it is away. Obviously, their ground is very difficult to go and play a different service, and the fans are very, very loud. Um, Not to say ours aren't loud, because we definitely have an advantage playing here. We know that. And that's why it's important whenever teams come to play here that we take maximum points from those games. Okay, well, you just mentioned it a second ago. The last time you played Halifax, it ended in a 2-2 draw, Kwesi scoring in stoppage time, and then looking at last weekend, another draw against Calvary. So what do you think has to happen this time around to ensure those scoring opportunities are converted to goals? I think, yeah, it was just a matter of being more clinical because uh, we can even tell from last week uh, we missed a lot of good chances. And then Calvary got maybe one or two and they cap- capitalized right away. So I think it's just a matter of being more clinical in front of a goal and try not concede uh, on the first o- o- occasion uh, that we come up against. So, yeah, I'd say being clean- clinical in front of a goal and uh, focus defensively. I think last game against Halifax, we all know that it was a little bit sloppy in, our, in terms of our overall performance. Um, obviously, we did create a lot of chances. And again, if we would have scored earlier in that game, much like the game against Calvary this weekend, the game probably would have been completely different. Um, but in both both games, we came out with a draw. Um, in both games, we found ways to score when we went down. So that's something that we have in our locker. But again, it's something that we need to kind of change the script on. We need to be the team that's starting on the front foot and putting the ball in the back of the net, which I know everyone wants to do. Um, it makes the game a lot easier for us and allows us to really dominate these games, which I think is something we should be doing. 
Well, you have been in control, I think it's safe to say, in the past couple matches, as we said, creating a lot of chances. So what are you liking from this team from an offensive standpoint that has to be continued here? I think it was good to see last week. You know, we had a very different lineup than we've had in the past, well, all season, to be fair. And we still showed that we're able to create chances and play the style of play that we want to play. So, I mean, I think that bodes well for us that we have players that can step in and do a job whenever they're called upon. Um, but at the same time, I know that we're playing good football. And, yeah, it might be frustrating at times that the ball won't go in the back of the net, but eventually it will. Mm-hmm. That's the law of large numbers. So that will, that will go well for us into the future. I think just the way we're working uh, tactically in training, like we work a lot of, on the same things and so that it becomes automatic basically so everyone knows what to do or where to be on the field. And uh, I think also the the moral of the, the group, the energy of the group has been really good in the past few weeks, especially with the, the win against Toronto and stuff like that. So everyone's in a good good place mentally. So I think that's been helping a lot. Now remember, for tomorrow on this Forge side, Malik Awalabi Belawu back available for selection following his red card suspension. However, left back Daniel Parra, unavailable, having collected two yellow cards in Calgary last weekend. I spoke to Chris Galongo on the different players that have had to step up in the back line following absences like those ones, the integration of Cissé and Nana. But first, I had to give him his flowers. Um, After last week's game against Calgary, I think you've collected a total of 27 saves made and you've impressed a lot of people around the league. You're in the conversations as to a player in contention for goalkeeper of the year. So what does it feel like to hear your name in those kinds of conversations um no i mean for me it's uh obviously it's a it's an honor but i mean i think that i've I played okay this part of the season i definitely think i can play a lot better so if that's what's being said then i'm pretty happy with that do you have any personal goals for the remainder of the season um i think just mostly just my development just progressing how i've been progressing and just taking little steps every game and keeping my consistency high. I think that's the biggest thing for me. As a goalkeeper, you have a pretty good field view. New players have stepped in, including Cissé and Nana. They've recorded some match minutes now and been fully in training. So how do you feel they've integrated into the group? Um, I think they've integrated fantastic, especially Cissé. You know, him being here before, everyone knows him. He's a funny guy. Same, Nana, very funny guy. (laughs) But, yeah, no, they they bring bring experience and... uh, a new aspect for our team, so they've been very good to help us uh, get some more points. In what ways are they funny? Is that a locker room thing? Yeah, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Nana, Nana is probably one of the most funny people I've ever met. <laughs> and same with Cissé, but it's, uh, I don't even think I can explain it. You just have to be there. This is a side note, but I heard that Nana can't get many people's names right. Is that true? <laughs> Didn't he call Coach Eddie Tom or something? So we got Tom, we got James Hams. Uh, James Hams. <laughs> Oh, what did he call Noah? Uh, I don't know. We have to go around. You have to do a video and just figure out everyone's name. Okay, okay. Because there's, there's, there's at least like seven. <laughs> okay. A lot of players on the back line have stepped up when they've needed to. Malik and Danny have been absent um, in a couple games as well. So what have you liked from this team defensively? Um, I think just I think our commitment to defend, and I think it shows that like anybody can step in and we'll still get the job done. So it's been good because we've been missing players here and there each week. So... It's been good that we've been able to keep going. Now, if I'm a Forge defender, I am feeling quite confident in a goalkeeper like Chris Colongo, who is as confident and as sure of himself as he is. Now, before I wrap up today's episode, I have to mention one other thing, and that is tomorrow's match is Garvin Matusla's 100th appearance for Forge FC. So I had to, of course, one, congratulate him, and two, ask him how it feels. I feel old. (laughs) I feel like I've been playing for a long time. It's only been four years. But it just shows you how time uh, goes by, like, fast. So I remember coming in three years ago, uh, a kid. Now I'm a, I can say I'm a man now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. If you see Garb tomorrow, be sure to give him a congratulations. Maybe shout it on the pitch or maybe after the game when families on the pitch happens. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. That'll wrap it up. Tomorrow, I'll see you at Tim Hortons Field as we watch these guys continue to thrive and hopefully hear Nana start to get some names right. This has been Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. 